Hello, friends. For those that I haven't met yet, my name is Dave Wright, and in addition to being one of the clergy who's affiliated with Emmanuel Presbyterian Church, as one of those who hangs around and uh, who is, uh, is grateful for being invited in by members of the community and uh, Johnny Eberly, Pastor Tad, to be part of this Wednesday night series, I'm also the university chaplain at Puget Sound, just down the street from, from our church. Tonight, I want to spend a few minutes with us uh, talking a little bit about healing and what healing is or is not and how that plays out in the time of coronavirus. And then inviting us into some, some content drawn from the Iona Worship Book, adapted for this moment and this odd technology, as a way to put into some practice for us together in this, this strange manner, the chance to look at the world, ourselves, our friends, our family, all those who are part of this great web of being, and lift up hope for healing and fullness and wholeness in ways that are consonant with at least my own understanding of, of what that might even begin to mean. It's good to be with you, and I'm grateful again to be part of, of this community. The question of healing in Christian faith is a tricky one, and it's one that has come up in different ways over the past past couple of months during the, the evolution of this epidemic, this pandemic. I remember being struck by a, a mentor in graduate school who was the picture-perfect, almost parody, of the distinguished, formal, proper theologian who had all the right degrees and spoke in a good Ivy League tone. But in talking about theologies of prayer and healing, he made a reference to his realization that even though he had all these degrees and this incredible training and no longer believed in a god who was effectively a wizard in the sky, if he found himself in an airplane about to go down, the way he put it is, I'd be back on my knees praying and sobbing to Jesus to save my soul, just like I would have when I was 15 years old. Many of us in American Christianity in particular have grown up with a sense of God or have seen in our culture a sense of the divine in which God is that, that, that caricature of a bearded old male in the sky who has a finger on a smite button and a finger on a heel button on his computer to riff a bit off of Gary Larson. And it's God's whim or God's decision or God's control about who suffers and who is healed and who finds hope and who gets lots of money to go with the prosperity gospel version of this. This idea of God as almost a divine mischief maker who totally controls things and who acts in ways that cause both good and bad is something that I have and I believe many of us in our community have struggled with for some time. That's not consonant with the God that we talk about, who is with us and who we understand through Jesus as our teacher and our guide, that we experience in the wonder of creation and the ways in which all that we are is woven together in, in this, this incredible web of being. There are other ways to think about healing and prayer and God's action than that kind of a, a mystical, magical wizard in the sky. For me, part of that reflection began learning at some point in the distant past that in New Testament Greek, the roots for healing and salvation are very close together and draw from the same, same roots linguistically. For me, that began to open a consideration of not so much healing as something that I ask for and a sacred Santa Claus gives to me if that sacred Santa Claus is in a good mood that day or if I've been especially pious or I'm wearing the right type of clothing or have eaten the right things or prayed the right prayers. But a sense of prayer and healing in God's action that is something that we all participate in, that we bring into the world through how we relate to each other, how we open our hearts and minds and souls, and how we connect to to together surround one another with love and comfort and grace and compassion and hope and healing. I don't want to say there is or is not a truly mystical element. The mystical is very important to me and to many of us. 
But this is the type of understanding of healing that I find in Celtic Christianity, and especially in some of the liturgies from the island of Iona. I want to come into those tonight, particularly because of what I've been calling to myself at least number numbness. I know for me, day after day, both personally and then with some of my workplace uh, realities, we're looking at numbers, tens of thousands of dead, millions of infected, curves here and there and up and down and all the things that help us understand the scope, but make it very difficult, I think, again, for me, to feel the humanness, the depth, the grief, the things that, that I know I find simmering under my own skin. And over the weekend, many of us probably saw that the New York Times attempted to address this by publishing a list of a fraction, about 1%, of the names of those who have died from, from coronavirus and COVID-19. That, for me, was very moving. And it still didn't get there. It was still such an overwhelming list of names. And just 1%, 300 pages, someone said, it would take to list all the dead. And that number is still growing rapidly. So for tonight, I want to invite us to get past some of that number numbness and to get into a space of prayer and reflection that is not about us asking God to do X for us because we pray in Y way. We're not figuring out some kind of ecclesial or theological formula to beat this thing. We are in it together with billions of humans around the world, some of whom we agree with, some of whom we don't, most of whom we are just in a muddy mess with. That web of life is not a pretty, easy, understandable thing, but we are in it. And this disease has reminded a lot of us of how interconnected we are. This morning, a picture popped up in my Facebook feed, a memory from three years ago um, from the island of Iona. And that was my first trip there. And it's hard to believe that's only been three years, given how much of my life and my beliefs and my practices, the, the history and the culture and the spirit of that space in that community have, have been a part of. And thinking of these themes of healing is more than divine magic. And the lives lost and the, the emotional processes we're in as more than just the numbers that overwhelm us. I wanted to close this reflection with a series of petitions and prayers from the Iona community adapted for the technology and our moment to invite us into that space of seeking healing without begging for a divine power that isn't consonant with a lot of what many of us believe. It'd be great if we could waggle a finger in the right angle or the right direction or make the right sign and God would make it all go away. Part of me wishes that there was a, a magic God who would just do that kind of, of abracadabra. But instead we have a God who's woven into the fabric of the universe, into our lives, into all that is, who breathes and grows and evolves and becomes with the world that that God is bringing into being. So I offer this series of prayers and petitions with brief silences between each inviting us into a space to open our hearts, minds, and spirits to one another and to that which is sacred in the world. I'll close this reflection with this litany and wish you a good night at that point, but I invite you into a spirit of openness with me. Jesus' people came to you when they were in trouble or pain. Friends carried them, strangers told you about them, some invited you into their homes or met you walking on the road. You listened to them, you prayed with them, and you brought hope and healing into their lives. So tonight, in the midst of this pandemic, we bring into our hearts and minds and hold in God's presence those who suffer, who are sick, and who are grieving. After each petition, I invite us to hold together just a few moments of silence, present to one another and to the divine and to the world in human solidarity. And so remembering and seeking to live into the life and ministry of Jesus, we remember. Jesus brought healing to those who were ill. 
We pray for those who are sick, that they may find comfort and restoration. Jesus sat with those who were suffering. We remember for those who are distressed, who are anxious or overwhelmed, that they may find rest and peace with each other, with the divine, through our love. Jesus wept for the city that he loved. We pray for the systems and structures of this world, that they may be places of justice and hope, especially as they seek to bring healing and care to the people that they serve. Jesus cried when a friend died. We hold in our hearts those who mourn, that we may share the burden of their grief and help them find comfort. Jesus knew loss intimately. We remember the dead that have gone before us, that their memory may be for us and for the world a blessing. Jesus invited his friends to bring healing out into the world. We honor with much gratitude those who care for the sick, who comfort the grieving, who give access to food for all of us, who do so much more to help people stay alive and to find healing and to find hope in these awful times, often right now especially while putting themselves at risk for our sake. Jesus lived a life in which the divine was present and known in all things. In this last moment of silence, we remember any others that we need to hold in our care tonight, hoping that they may know the presence of the sacred in and around them always. Spirit of the living God, present with us now. Enfold in body, mind, and spirit each of those we have held in our hearts this evening and each of us. May we all find healing from all that causes us harm. Amen. And I close us with this closing evening blessing from Iona. Until I see you next time, be well, take care, and please keep in touch. I look forward to seeing what my, my friends and colleagues bring in the future, upcoming Wednesdays and on Sundays, of course. Bless to us, O God, the stars that are above us, the earth that is beneath us, your image deep within us, and tonight's rest that is before us. Go in peace. Amen.